Here is your informational tape service to the county organizations of national farmers for the month of June. When the announcement came in mid-May that the United States Supreme Court declined to review a decision by the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals favoring the NFO in a long antitrust case, we talked to Devon Woodland, president of National Farmers. He was at his home at Blackfoot, Idaho. We asked him what the decision means. Well, I think this is a very significant decision by the highest court in the land. Uh, there's been those, I'm sure, over the years who have questioned uh, whether uh, NFO was a legal entity or organization. Uh, it's now been proven that we are, that the uh, practices that we uh, uh, involve ourselves in, in negotiating and bargaining uh, contracts for producers' commodity is in fact legal. And uh, certainly we have not been in violation of any of the antitrust laws. Some people are saying, Devon, that this was one of the biggest antitrust cases in the whole history of those laws. And they're saying, why do farmers have to go at each other so? The National Farmers Organization uh, did not want to go into court with this uh, uh, suit. We uh, tried uh, before it was ever filed to sit down and talk those who brought the charges against us uh, out of pursuing it. We tried to uh, settle with them uh, before it went into court, uh, after it got into court, uh, and they simply were not interested in uh, being realistic in any discussions that would have brought an early end to this action. The highest court in the land has finally said that the NFO is not guilty and that they are to be assessed some damages. When are these damages going to be assessed? Could you describe that procedure? It, uh, it may be a period of time, depending on the parties involved. Of course, when you get into the courts, you can drag these things out uh, for an extended period of time. He will go back to the Kansas City court now, and uh, how swift he acts, uh, of course, will depend on the judge. But uh, if the parties are, are interested in moving rapidly, it can, uh, it can be brought to a, a rapid conclusion. And hopefully that's the route that... Uh, the adversary will be interested in, rather than uh, causing more costs to be borne by farmers. It's just unfortunate that, uh, uh, that they chose this route and have cost their producers millions and millions of dollars. And we were forced into a position to defend ourselves or let them destroy us. And we uh, chose to defend ourselves, and of course uh, uh, justice prevailed which we felt certain it would because uh, we knew what the facts were. And as we explained them to the courts, they readily uh, recognized and uh, ruled accordingly. Devon Woodland, president of National Farmers. Jack Ream, who grew up in Montana, now works with livestock in Nebraska, and Bill Talbert, one of the most experienced staff pros in all of NFO. They tell about a new project, a commission form of livestock procurement. Jack Ream. One of the most important things that we've launched into in a long time is the process of getting commissioned livestock spotters in a variety of counties in Nebraska. This is a, this is a program that was put together by a uh, home office. And uh, what this entails is we're having commissioned people spot livestock for our salaried staff in a variety of counties. And what this is going to do is it's going to increase production, it's going to put our salaried people in front of more livestock, and consequently it's going to increase the amount of livestock moving through the organization. Not only are our people going to be busier and more productive, but the organization as a whole will see a tremendous benefit from this. This program has been field tested in Minnesota, and it worked very, very well. And uh, right now we're launching it out into five different states, and eventually going to have it in as many as possibly 12 states. Jack Ream. Bill Talbert, our other guest today, has a track record for getting things started. He worked in the field staff, the meat department, educational services, the broiler program in the south, black-eyed beans in California, alfalfa in Idaho and Oregon, and now the new livestock procurement project. Bill Talbert. It seems to me today it's a totally different ball game, if that's the right term. Uh, collective bargaining never has been understood very well by very many people. And I, I guess I seriously doubt if collective bargaining ever is going to be fully understood by very many people. And I, I like to think that uh, throughout the years, people, uh, not just in agriculture, but in lots of fields, 
have done the right thing for the wrong reason. I'm satisfied that as I talk to relatively young, substantial sized producers throughout the, the Midwest here today, the livestock producers, that they're starting to get a grasp on, on the necessity to be able to project their cash flow with some degree or a high degree of accuracy. And, and a realization that in order to do this, it's, it's going to take a collective bargaining program to do it. Today, it's a quiet, business-like approach to a very real business problem. And uh, our, our collective bargaining program is being accepted by those substantial-sized younger producers who are looking at it, realizing that this is what they've been looking for for a, for a good long time. Bill Talbert, longtime organizer for NFO. My name is Gene Grover. I've been working in New England area, the Northeast. We've been uh, enrolling a lot of misplaced or displaced milk shippers in the Northeast. Uh, Co-ops are having financial problems and and have uh, they've been merging from from one organization to another organization and splitting up a lot of the independents that used to be independent now are, are realizing that they've got to go with some other marketing agency in order to you know to stay in business to keep marketing their milk. What do National Farmers people list are, uh, as the benefits for these displaced dairy people? Well our benefits up there are as compared to the people that, that they've been uh, associated with or we have guaranteed or trust protected checks and that they don't have in some of the other sales. We have a national organization that we do professional collective bargaining and whereas they just go on you know wherever they can move a load of milk you know at any price and you know we we have collective bargaining work yes for us. a nationwide pattern that correct what do you think are they do they understand it better in the new england states now the concept of collective bargaining yes i think uh, they're all much more aware now that they have to uh, take just a little bit of time and and be concerned with marketing rather than just producing they got to get a price for it merle sunken head of the hog division is here and i'm going to ask merle First, to describe how does the NFO go about it? What steps? The four steps in any program is blocking, negotiations, ratification, and delivery. You go into an area, you block all the producers' hogs together that's in that given area. You negotiate the contracts with all the packers that can receive the hogs from that particular area. When the negotiations are done from the home office here, you go back out with the contracts that have been offered and you let the producers themselves ratify that contract, pick the one that they think is the best, and then shortly thereafter you start delivering the product itself for a 12-month given period of time. Is there any recent example of this? There sure is. The last one we just got done ratifying just in the last few days here is the one at Tiffin, Ohio, and the producers are real enthused about it and the packers are getting a very good delivery on that contract. I'm talking with Don Reinhardt, who lives near Alveda, Ohio. About how many hogs do you bring there? Approximately 40 head per week. We've conducted a hog block in the last month in this area, and it has picked me up on live buy an additional dollar, a hundred price, or approximately two dollars per hog. And with uh, 1,500 hogs per year, it increased my uh, net profit about 3,000 per year. Tell about putting together this block. We had uh, five teams that worked this area, and, and what we did is we contacted all the producers and uh, got the hogs put on a block. Then we told them within a month we'd be back to them with a price formula, which we did. And we went ahead then and uh, called a meeting, a ratification meeting, we got all the members in that we possibly could, or hog producers. And at that point, it was ratified. And the ones that didn't make it to the meeting, we went back and contacted them to make sure that they know what it was all about. We're at the point now where we're delivering these to the packers that we ratified the contract with. Why you do a better job of bargaining with a packer when you've got a bigger block like that? You're assuring that packer uh, a guaranteed supply per week, and uh, this is what he's looking for. Before to give you them prices, and 
that's what we're after. To Floyd Homan, manager of the Tiffin Point, he tells how it's been following completion of a big NFO block. The exciting part about this is the number of new members that we have signed and are delivering. They all realize that the hog industry out here needs help and that NFO is the one who can give them the help. You feel that the industry needs a, a sort of a better organization structure to supply it? Oh yes, the producers realize this as well, that if they, we can uh, send a, a guaranteed supply of hogs to these, uh, these processors, then they're going to be able to do a better job in their marketing and therefore cut down their costs and be able to pass some of that back on to us. Well, through the years, has this Tiffin Point supplied several packers? Yes, we uh, probably move hogs into four or five different packers, depending on uh, the situation. Most of our live by hogs are going to, a, to the Superior Pack over here in eastern Ohio. We have uh, sent out grain and yield hogs to... Logan's Port and into to Wilson Foods over in Indiana and to Tons Meats. We sent them to Select Meat at uh, Greenfield, Ohio, to Dinner Bell Meats at both Troy and Archbold. We forward contracted with most of these various packers, and our forward contracting program has been one of our big assets here at this point. Sounds like a very businesslike operation. We're able to offer these producers a complete program, uh, be it a grain yield, a live buy, along with a forward contract, makes it makes it good for any size producer. We had producers when we inventoried the hogs for this block, ranging from production of 100 head a year up to 9,000 a year. Do you kind of give them assurance that you can tailor the operation to the way they like to do business? Yes, this is one of the big assets here. We'll work with them in any way, and, and we've been running every week here, either live by or grade and yield hogs, and giving them the option of which way they want to go. And we have found their producers should not be going on a grade and yield program at this time because they just don't dollar back the net dollars. But when we find someone like this, we sit down and try to work out their program. Is it genetically? Is it in their feeding program? Or what is it to help them put out a better product and explain to them that this is not only going to be good for them, it's going to be good for the entire industry all the way through because it'll end up putting a better quality cut in the counter. A better quality product, a principal NFO objective on the road toward pricing by farmers. That was Floyd Homan, manager of the Tiffin, Ohio Collection Point. Today we hear Ed Graff, chief assistant to the president of National Farmers. In eight days recently, he talked to nine different groups, all the way from junior and senior high schoolers to a committee of the United States Senate. Ed, does one say the same things to all of these groups? You say the same thing, but you have to do it in different words. As an example, the 7th uh, and 8th uh, graders, it's a story to them. The seniors, of course, they're ready to go into farming in many cases, but it's really the start of NFO ancient history to the 7th graders. From there, we made uh, three television programs. There were phoned in questions and a host? No, it was strictly an interview, an interview like you. You never knew what kind of a question the guy was going to ask you next. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now let's take you to Washington, D.C. Okay, and there I talked to the uh, Dairy Subcommittee of the Senate uh, on Agriculture, and of course this is where we oppose USDA's uh, bill where they want to tax the dairy farmer. We have proposed a bill where they would pay the dairy farmer in an incentive not to produce milk. It will meet all the requirements that the government is asking for, and we know the program will work because they've had the experience now with the PIC program, or PIK. Now, quite a number of groups favor that too, don't they? Yes, there's quite a coalition that's in favor of that. I've been talking with Ed Graff, chief assistant to the president of National Farmers Organization. He spoke to nine different groups in eight days' time, all the way to the United States Senate. You have heard the June informational tape service to the county organizations of NFO. It was compiled and edited by Don Mack, head of the broadcast division. I'm Phil Allen, and that for this month is something to think about.